In our last video, we spent a few days at an amazing resort way down in a valley that it's a very interesting drive down in there, very steep, had to actually stop and rest our brakes. And in today's video, we have to get out of that resort because we're headed to the capital to pick up a pretty exciting package, which you guys are gonna have to wait to see what that is. But we're both a little bit nervous about this ride out of here and uh, wondering if it may take a long time and there may be some stopping to let the engine rest. Also, we burned a lot of fuel on the yeah. way down, more than yeah. we thought, and uh, that's got me a little nervous. Uh, are we gonna make it to the next station? Yeah, so we'll see how much fuel we burn and if we can get out of here. So this will be a little bit of a nervous ride up, but let's go do it. All right, there's the pretty river. Here's the pretty road. It's not steep yet. That part's coming soon. Vanna's on the dash. She doesn't know it's a nervous moving day. I don't know, maybe cats can pick up on that. Because I think we're definitely both nervous. Right, Kurt? Yeah, it's moving day, and we got this tough hill, low fuel, but we're not going to someplace exciting. It's a chore day. We got to pick something up tomorrow. So. We had all this hard driving with no exciting destination. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> but. Here we go. It's all part of living in a van and traveling the world. Let's go. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Let me figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs Say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Alright Maybe about halfway We're not sure because there's no internet down here To check the maps So far a couple of rough spots But the van seems to be handling it okay so far and it's a beautiful ride again. So, here we go, the next steep section. too bad because Vanna hasn't even moved. She's like, this is a cool ride, guys. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it was not as bad as we thought. There were a couple spots that were really hard. We still got a bit more to go, but uh, as usual, a lot of worrying about nothing. What about the fuel? Fuel, we're at three bars. We started with four. So I think we're at least three quarters of the way up, but we still got some steep climbs, and then we probably got about another 30 to 45 minute drive before we get to a fuel station. Mountain drive, so we still gotta watch the fuel. We still gotta get out of here too, guys. Yeah, here's another steep climb just as I say that. Yeah, maybe we need to quit talking about it. <laughs> See y'all at the top. We made it. Just like that. 78 miles to San Jose. Our camps, not miles, kilometers. Our camp's probably not that far. Nice driving, Kurt. Glad that's over. I don't think it was quite as hard as we both expected. But now, let's find us a fuel station. And then a camp. Whew! Hope y'all enjoyed that ride out of that valley. 
It was fun and pretty and stressful just a couple of times. All right, we made it. We did not run out of gas. We made it out of the mountains and to the gas station. So we're gonna fuel up and then after that, it's a grocery store. And then we're pretty much gonna head straight to our camp here in the suburbs of San Jose. And I do some editing for you guys this afternoon. And in the morning, we go pick up our mystery package, don't we, Kurt? Yeah, looking forward to that. All right, we're pulling out of our camp spot. And you heard Kurt say, we're here to pick up a package. It's a top secret package. And we're headed to go pick it up at the airport where it was flown into us. But you guys are gonna have to wait. Hey guys, all right, it's an exciting morning. As you know, we got to pick up a package in San Jose here at the capital of Costa Rica. But I don't think we're going to tell y'all what's in this package. It's something we're kind of excited about, but I don't think we have time to share it right now because not only is it package pickup day, but it is the start of border prep. As soon as we get this package picked up, we have a long drive back through the mountains to the vet. It's time to get the kitties papers so we can take them into Panama and cross the border with no worries. And then of course we'll have to do our COVID test and all that kind of stuff. So it's border prep time. And I think that means that we're probably not going to tell y'all what this special package is that we're very excited about until we get to Panama. Maybe. We'll see. But I will tell y'all this. It is super cool. So, Kurt is getting it now with our good friend Mike from a camp we stayed at a few weeks ago who helped us get it shipped in. We're picking it up and um, then we'll be southbound on another curvy mountain road headed to the vet that can help us get these kitties across the border. So let's do this. Border prep for Panama. Guys, we are pulling into our destination. We picked up the package this morning. I drove the first half of the trip through the city of San Jose and the greasy traffic and construction. Snow drove the second leg through the windy mountain roads, the cloud forests, all the rain and slow trucks. Wonderful job, but we're almost here. Yeah, and I think we need to talk about the elephant in the room. The package. <laughs> the, the package pa is huge. <laughs> it's giant, guys. And we forgot when I was telling y'all y'all were gonna have to wait. I think I momentarily <laughs> forgot that we lived in a van. <laughs> so, spoiler alert: we'll be opening the package soon. When we told you we had to get rid of the box, we weren't kidding. So. We're about to open this up and reveal what we are so excited about. So hold on just a minute. <laughs> oh guys, we got some boxes. All right, we're on box number two and here's another box. Oh, 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 they can see what it is now if they can read the box. What is it? It's a Zero Breeze Mark II. We got another air conditioner. This one is supposed to be, geez, excited to, portable. So hold on, we got to keep opening and see if this thing gets smaller. Unboxing videos in vans are not very graceful. <laughs> Ooh, Mark II Smart Battery. So is this an air conditioner that runs on batteries, Kurt? It is. <laughs> How small that is. That was a giant box. It looks like one of those boom boxes I had when I was a kid. <laughs> I can see Kurt carrying a boom box. Is it heavy? No, look at it. It's like nothing. 
Okay, guys, so when we were building the van, this company was kind of new with what they were doing. Kurt had researched them, and we almost pulled the trigger on one, right? Yeah, we almost got one of these things, but they were in prototype phase, and since then, I think they've redone it or whatever, so this is like Gen 2. Yeah, yeah, and what is exciting for us, and some of you may be going, but wait a minute, these guys have an air conditioner in their van, which we do. Kurt has a 12-volt air conditioner mounted underneath our van that will run off of our, our batteries and our solar system. But we can't run it a lot. Like, it won't quite make it through a night. This thing is supposed to go three and a half to five hours on a full battery charge in sleep mode. Yeah. So that's good for us when we're in hot climates. Really good for the kitties. And what I'm super stoked about is that we can take this thing outside and it'll just blow cold air on me. <laughs> Wherever I go, Kurt can carry it like a boom box and it'll just blow cold air on me. But anyway, the people at, uh, the, the nice folks over at Zero Breeze reached out to us and said, would you guys like to try one of these? So they have sent us this and we are gonna give it a try. You know, Kurt's gotta do a little bit of work to get it, figure out where we're gonna keep it and all that kind of stuff in the van. Now that we've got our eyeballs on it, he can start figuring out where he's gonna put it and how he's gonna set it up. It's a lot smaller than I thought it was gonna be yeah. for sure. Yeah, but we're super excited about it. And once we get it set up, we will do a, a nice little review to tell you guys how it's working. So I am chilling in front of the zero breeze. Right now, the temperature center on it says it's about 64 degrees. But this thing has a really simple startup guide to it. Super easy, took it out of the box. There's a few buttons on the top. You press the power button to turn it on. Cool button. There's a rocket button to crank the cool air up. There's a nighttime mode to preserve the battery, kicks it into low power mode. There's also a light and then a fan button if you just want to blow the fan. The battery has a couple USB ports on it, but I can tell you right now, this thing's blowing some cool, cool air. Now, right now, it's also very quiet. So I'm super excited at this out of the box. It looks great. It's small and compact, but there's gonna be a challenge that we gotta solve for now using this temporary, I can see it perfect. If you have a tent, even better. But there's a couple exhaust lines that, that we gotta solve for, and you can see they're kinda big, so we gotta figure that out. And then there's also the condensation line, the drain line, we're gonna have to figure out where to run that out. So, right out of the box, I'm excited about this unit, but we have a little bit of work to do because we gotta figure out how we're gonna mount this and make this useful for our van. We are about to try a brand new snack in the van. In our pre-van life, this was super easy. You just opened up the microwave door, threw in the bag, closed it, and hit the word popcorn. Three minutes later, you'd have a bag of popcorn. But we don't have a microwave. So we're going old school. We're going to try to pop some popcorn on the cooktop. Have no idea how to do it, so we're just going to wing it. We'll be back in a minute to show you if it worked. What's going on in there? <laughs> Popcorn! Pop it up! I like it! Oh, listen to it go! Whoa! Did you hear that popcorn? <laughs> Smell it? Popcorn! Oh, nice! Look at that. Mm. That's good, right? That good. <laughs> I know. It's time to take the kitties to the vet to get the paperwork to cross the borders. But as you guys, if you guys have been watching along, you know that Snow is the one who usually takes care of the cat paperwork. Unfortunately, Snow has a very serious migraine headache. She got one last night, had a rough night last night. She's back in the bed, so we're gonna let her rest today. I'm gonna try to fumble through this process, 
for any of you who have ever had migraines, you know she probably had a really rough night last night. She's feeling a little bit better today. She's got an ice pack on her head. So we're gonna try to drive the best we can, get the kiddies to the vet, so we can get ready for this next border crossing. So, we're on the way. All right, we're leaving the vet. We got one more chore to do. We gotta pick up the laundry that we dropped up yesterday. Just got an update on Snow's migraine. She's improved a little bit. We do have to come back here tomorrow to get the paperwork, so we're gonna be staying in this town one more night for sure anyway. Okay, Kurt has gone inside of the vet to pick up the vet papers and pay for all the stuff. It's been a couple of days, guys. I know Kurt probably told y'all I went down with a hardcore, mean, three-day migraine. So we've basically lost three days but I'm rested, I'm up and moving, and we're gonna start to try to head towards the border. But no rush, we don't want a relapse of this migraine. And uh, so, yeah, we're back to border prep. And the cat papers are always step one. Okay, this is our lovely vet, Diana, Hi. Dr. Diana. Hi. Nice to meet you. And we just got done with G-Money and Vanna, and how did the cats do? They did great. Yeah. They are. They both have different personalities, and they are very nice cats, and they behave very well in this small face. <laughs> and they're healthy. And they are very healthy. Perfect. And they are doing a very nice trip, so we have to go and find you on, on YouTube. <laughs> and they're ready to go to Panama too, so I'll tell yes, you. Yes, they're going to do their paperwork to pass the border, and and I wish you you have fun, and I wish you health and luck in every border you find. I can I can tell you that Diana has been one of the absolute best vets we've been we've met on this journey. She was very thorough and very helpful and you can tell she loves cats. If you have to cross the border and you're coming from Costa Rica into Panama, this is the place to come 100%. So, thank you're very you. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. What's the verdict? It was expensive. It was like 140,000 colones. I don't know how that converts the dollars but we have the paperwork they said we do not need to check them out of Costa Rica I think it's gonna be hundred and twenty five a pet getting into Panama um, but we're ready to go yeah so is G I think because he has been chattering like crazy <laughs> and Vanna she's ready to go too all right I'm starting to come out of the migraine fog and we are starting to develop a plan we have all the vet paperwork and she was nice enough to make the copies for us, so we do not need that. We are headed to a campsite that's pretty close to the border. We think we can get there today, no problem. So fingers crossed on that. And if that's the case, guys, in the morning, we're crossing the border into Panama. We are headed down, out of the mountains, down to the coast, and it just came up a rainstorm on these curvy, steep mountain roads. Kurt's got his hands full, but he's doing a great job. So we head down to the coast, skirt along the coast, and then we'll turn back inland before we get to our campsite for the night. So we knew we were headed for nowhere glamorous. We have a choice of a gas station on one side of the road and a restaurant on the other, but it is close to the border, so we've picked the restaurant first. Kurt is headed in to see if this will work. Good news. Yeah? We can eat here and we can stay here. So do we eat and we don't have to pay? We have to pay for the food. Well, of course we have to pay for the food. I meant the camp spot. <laughs> I think not. So, so we're gonna eat lunch right now since it's lunchtime? Yep, ahorita. And then we can settle in and maybe I can get that next video yep. edited. Yep, 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 yep. And then what are we doing in the morning? Panama! Vanna, you ready to go to Panama? So that'll be the cats, let's see, the U.S., Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica. Tomorrow is the eighth country the kitties will be in. How many countries have you been in? <laughs> <laughs> Vanna's doing pretty good. It's the travel kitty. Look at her. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to head in and get some lunch. Then we're going to settle in for the evening. It's bright and early in the morning, Kurt. What are we doing? Panama! <laughs> That's what we're doing. Right. See y'all in the morning. Two passports. Kitty cat papers. 
temporary import permit and documents needed to get the new one for Panama. Insurance migration tip, wherever we go for the cats, Panama. we're out of here. <laughs> Let's do it guys, border crossing day. Okay, step one, leave Costa Rica. So you pull up, you kind of go around the semis and when you'll see immigration on the left, pull off, there's a little parking area with some restaurants and stuff to the right. The very first thing you do is right next to this restaurant is a little building called Impuesto de Salida. And that is where you need to pay your exit tax. Costa Rica charges money for you to leave the country. I think it was $8 a piece. You go there, you give the lady your money, she gives you a piece of paper, and then you walk right across the street to immigration, right there. And there's a few lines, and you wanna to go to the line that says exit Costa Rica. You give him your receipt, he stamps your passport, and you, as a person, are checked out of Costa Rica. Then, Kurt takes our temporary import permit for the van. So we are checked out, but Kurt has gone to check out the van. And he's somewhere in there. It's right around the corner from where you check out as a person. So once he gets us checked out of Costa Rica, the van checked out of Costa Rica, we will go down there to Panama. And at Panama, from what we understand, somewhere just past immigration, is a place where we can do our COVID test and get results within 30 minutes. So we'll go down there, we'll find somewhere to park, then we'll get our COVID test. And then we'll be back in a little bit, guys. Border crossing is underway. We went up there, inside that building, there's like an open alleyway where it says Panama, and that's where you get your COVID test. You go back there 30 minutes later and you pick up your COVID test, and then we're gonna get in that line next to that brightly colored building. We're gonna get ourselves stamped in to Panama. Okay, we went in this building right here. We presented our COVID test. We got in line to get our passport stamped into Panama. Uh, when you have a private vehicle, they require that the driver go through the process first so that he can get on over and start getting the van stamped in. So I was not able to get stamped in yet. I wait in the van until he gets back and then I go up there and I can get stamped in. I think they do that in order to keep this line moving because it is tight and solid here. They have parking guys that squish you up tight. There is not much room. So I'm in the van so I can keep pulling up and Kurt has gone in to get the van checked in. We're almost to Panama, guys. Kurt just got in the van and said lunchtime. What did that mean? It means borders are exhausting and so we've been waiting for the iguana. I mean, no complaints, it's just what it is, but they're on lunch now. The so border everything, closes for so lunch? It's like the border closes, nothing's shaking, so we have to wait one hour for everybody to eat before we can check the cats in. We have to fill out this declaration. The van's been inspected. All we need to do is drive through fumigation, but we still have to wait to check the cats in until after they get back to lunch. Okay, well, I made you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. There you go. All right, we started this process at 9.30. It is 12.06. We have officially left Costa Rica and officially done all of our paperwork to enter Panama. We are going through the fumigation thing. From what we understand, there will be one more final inspection about a mile up the road. And then I think we can say that we are officially in Panama. Oh, it's official. Well, we got one more inspection. Then it could be official. <laughs> <laughs> As Kurt said, we're officially in Panama! <laughs> we just made it through final inspection. We are good to go. We got an hour and 20 minutes till our camp. 
We are in Panama, guys. Woo! If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.